Hello and welcome to another episode of Talk Toys, the podcast series where we talk about things that hints in the name. Uh, and today, as you can tell by the title, we have gathered to discuss Netflix is remake, reimagining, reboot of Cowboy Bebop. Um, and joining me today is Dan. Hello. So, um, yeah, so for context, when we're, as we're recording this, about three weeks ago, I think it maybe came out. And about two weeks ago, I kind of, I was interested in watching it and was like, oh, I'll chat with some friends about it. But then I thought, hey, you know what? We could do a podcast about this. And so that's what we're doing now. That's that's cool let's. to you. Up. Yes, let's do it. So, um, yeah, for those out of the loop, uh, just a very quick rundown. Cowboy Bebop is an anime from the 90s. Um, chances are, if you're watching this, you know what Cowboy Bebop is. If you don't, then I, this isn't going to make much sense to you, really. But uh, very recently, Netflix made a live-action adaptation of this, like, legendary anime. <clears throat> it's a masterpiece. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that the Cowboy Bebop anime, if you are an anime fan, there is a, there's a solid 60 to 70% chance it's probably in your top 10. Uh, it's It's just that... Th- that, Impressive. Yeah, it's it's that monumental a thing. Uh, so obviously it was only a matter of time until someone remade it, and that someone was Netflix. So as far as I'm aware, uh, I haven't looked hard into the Netflix series, but it is a Western-produced TV show. I think some staff from the original Cowboy Bebop did help with it and uh, inform, but this is very much co- uh, Netflix's version of... You know, produced yeah. by Netflix and staff and stuff. Um, Pretty much. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, today we're just going to have kind of a chat about what we thought. Because I've made a kind of point of not discussing this with Dan at all. Because I want, you know, our discussion to be honest and, you know, frank. And not sort of predicated on, oh, we already know what each other feels. So, you know, we're going to change what we're saying to, like, appease that. Um, yeah. And vice versa. Yes, yeah, of course. So we're going to roughly break it down into three categories uh, just to kind of keep the flow a little bit focused. So we're going to start talking about the story in general, uh, you know, and then we're going to go on to the characters in the series, you know, what we thought the characters are like. And then we're going to kind of close out with how we feel it held up compared to the original anime. Um, Now... Obviously, it's going to be impossible not to have all three mix up. So we are going to obviously end up discussing, oh, this compared to the anime stuff, you know, um, it'll it'll pop up throughout. But I kind of want to approach it, at least from the start, as if we're viewing just the Netflix Cowboy Bebop as its own thing. Uh, So, you know, its own merits, because obviously it's not an anime, so it's not going to have the same things that an anime has. Um... So we'll begin with vaguely discussing the story. So I, I think it's safe to say, Dan, that the story very, very roughly is the story of the anime, really. Loosely. Yeah. Loosely based. So it, you've got you've got your, your standards. You've got uh, Spike, Jet and Faye. You've got yeah. the Bebop itself. They're travelling through space. They're broke. They're doing odd jobs. You know, it's it's the standard. Yes. Um, and yeah, it's to to be honest, the the first episode as well was kind of a remake of was it the first or the second episode? I think of the anime. It was the well, they captured the like the intro was from the the movie. Uh, ah, right. The only yes. difference is right is they they did the whole scene um, in the at a casino, whereas in the in the animated film. It was in a just supermarket stall, so. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. So so I mean so w- one thing I think the the big the 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 elephant in the room as it were is, whilst I think it is safe to say that the plot generally does follow the plot of the anime, uh, you know, yeah. sort of the the team meet each other, they they all you know learn to live with each other and stuff and. Spike's past catches up with him. 
One mm. aspect that this series does seem to focus on heavily, uh, a lot more than the anime did, uh, is the subplot including Vicious and Julia. And Julia, yeah, and that uh, love triangle. Yes, where you know. obviously you know it popped up in the anime. Uh, you know, but it was very much it was it was very much like they were they were in the anime they were mysterious. You didn't really know about them. Yeah, and as because and there were twenty six episodes of the anime, and each one you know any time you had a mention of like vicious or Julia, it was usually quite quite intense. And like, ooh, oh, you know, and you you're kind of intrigued. You kind of you want to know, but then, but in this, it's just right on the table. Yes. And... So the uh, yeah. So well, I I I fully agree there, and that it did seem in the anime whenever they ran into vicious, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't like there was anything leading them. It was happenstance. The they happened to be in a place where the syndicate was, and where the syndicate was, vicious was. So. Mm. They'd scuffle and then you know leave that. that yes. Was. Whereas the TV series kind of, I, I'm gonna so just for context as well because it's a long way of saying it. I'm gonna refer to Netflix as the TV series and the anime as the anime, just so okay. j- just so we're kind of clear and on the same page. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas sort of it was a bit more organic. I feel like in the anime that it was like oh. Oh, we're on the same place that the syndicate are. Oh, okay. The TV series very much felt like sort of no. This has been planned for months. This is a. Well, there's a lot. Thing. I mean, I mean, obviously, this whole episode is going to be filled with spoilers. But to be honest, yes. if you are watching this, uh, y- you know, I would be like, well, why, why are you listening yeah, to this? Yeah, I but, mean, I, I'd recommend know. if if you if you do intend watching the Netflix series. Uh, or even the anime. Maybe you've never seen Cowboy Bebop before. I I turn this off now. Um, there's yeah. th- there's going to be nothing but spoilers. We're not going to hold back because I don't think there's any point in holding back. No. Um, okay. With that out of the way, right? I just there's there's there's, there's changes to the plot that makes me think. Right. So um, obviously Spike uh, kills pretty much the an entire clan. Um, and yeah. and uh, well, the one thing that I didn't like, right, was the whole. Uh, well, Spike kills a kid, and yeah, well, which that also kind of confused me because I don't know. I I wa- maybe I wasn't paying full attention to like when it happened or something, but she didn't seem like a kid. It 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 was, it was kind of like presented as like you Spike, you killed a child. Where she kind of just seemed like an adult, or like. Well, it was a, it was a okay, it was a young teen at least, or you know. But the okay. but the point is the whole the start of the episode is you know he because uh, they haven't the the whole episode is pretty much a flashback with vicious and you know uh, and when they were best buds yeah basically. episode and nine I think episode it was. nine yeah. yeah and uh, and you know he makes a point. Remember the rule: don't kill kids. That's the and mm. that's the written rule or something, you know. And uh, and then he just goes and does that. And uh, I think the whole context: oh, he's doing everything out of his way to protect Vicious, right? But it just feels really just it, it just doesn't yeah. fit. It I mean, doesn't well, fit at all. To be honest, so I I mean I I I didn't really pick up on that. To be honest, I I. It wasn't necessarily for any reason. I just don't think I no paid much attention. That's fine. That's fine. But <laughs> but that says a lot. <laughs> but but I mean, one thing that very much in keeping with that, with the character doesn't fit thing, is um, episode eight, just before it. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. It might be the start of episode ten. Either one. Where basic? No, I think it was the start of episode ten. Where basically, um, Jet and Faye find out about. Spike's past, you know, like it's all on the table. Oh and, yeah, that would be ten. Yeah, and Jet's be daughter's one, yeah. been captured. Yes, and yeah. Jet then goes from being sympathetic to Spike to kind of like, hey, look, you know, we've been through a lot, man. To like, I'm going to shoot you straight dead right now at this bar. And it's like, I, 
I don't. It, it was a very. It was a one hundred and eighty. Yeah, it, it was. Sure. It was such such a crazy snap. That's just like, e. I mean, we. You know, obviously, Jet throughout this series. You know, he he was a guy who had issues and stuff. Obviously, yes. But he was never at any point, even with like the bad guys, even when they were chasing people down, he was never the type that'd be like. I'm just going to mercilessly execute this person on the spot with my gun. Like, but all of a sudden it's like, no, that, that's appropriate for Spike though. I will blow his brains out in my spaceship. It's like... Yeah, because I oh. think, well, basically, well, like, they added the whole um, father-daughter yes, know, relationship so... kind of thing, which I mean, to, it, it, it was like, like, you know, you could kind of see where they were going for, but it's, to, it's to fine. It, but honestly, to me, it kind of made me dislike Jet more because it's the it's the kind of typical American movie trope of like, oh, he's down on his luck, he loves his daughter, but his wife's married to another man. But still, he'll do anything to raise uh, to make his little girl happy. Yeah. It's like I've seen this in so many movies now with that like. It was very like, uh, but yeah. saying that though, I thought Jack Black as like, like as a character, as you know, you know, a, a portrayal of the one from the anime. I'd say he's got the, the mannerisms and pretty much everything down to a point. Yeah, I I thought he was really good. If if anything, he was one of the best characters. I think in the yeah. Show. So for me, the the things that kind of kept me the most invested in this show was Spike and Jet. Not yes. necessarily because I love their character story or because I want to see what they were doing next, but genuinely, both actors, I think, did a really good job. I mean, you know, I'll definitely argue later on of how accurate I feel Spike and Jet were portrayed, but I feel like they... In that series, the characters they were given the task of playing, they played really well. Like, I love their chemistry. Like, Yeah, as I say, chemistry is the key thing. And, and I think hmm. they occasionally, when they had episodes where it was, you know, it was very much, you know, it kind of like... I, I, was, I was speaking to a friend and, uh, and she said that uh, she compares, uh, you know, kind of Cowboy Bebop with, like, Scooby-Doo. In the sense that yeah. you know you got a different like mon- well monster of the week, but in this case it would be bounty hunter of the of the thing and all the shenanigans they get up to, and that's pretty much it. And I think the key for that was the chemistry and Jet and this uh, version they occasionally do, and you know sometimes fade to an extent. Yeah, it's I. But uh, okay, the writing was atrocious. Yes, like, so I. Uh, Okay, go right. Well, so w- one thing I picked up on is that it, it it almost felt like a Marvel movie, if that makes sense. So basically, yeah, I, it was very much like it's a very modern way of doing it, and also it seemed. And th- this is a criticism I don't think I've ever had of a TV series or film I've ever watched, but it felt like they swore too much, like. Yes, I, I get. You know, I, I get do. that it was a gritty universe, right? And you know, I I know it's like it, it's an adult thing. You know, Cowboy Bebop was heralded as being like violent and quite controversial. You know, sort of like it doesn't shy away from things. But there were moments where it was like, guys, what, what, like you just you just swearing for the for the sake of it? No, like there's there's no yeah, meaning to it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I was I I was thinking the same because I was thinking right, you know, I. Hey guys, I don't, I, I don't mean to be prude, but you know, it just felt really out of place. It felt like imagine um, Ash from Pokemon saying, uh, "Go, go, Pikachu, you motherfucker," or yeah. something like that. It'd just be like, huh? I think. Hey, so you know, I, that, whoa. I, th- I think part of what was a bit wrong with it as well is that kind of going back to my Marvel movie comparison, it did seem that every character had to be. The wise cracking smart guy, which it was very much. I felt like I was watching a cheap version of 
Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, you yeah, know, kind of. It's... They were trying. I think they were like, well, you know, th- this uh, film series is. Let's let's try and emulate that because uh, people love that at the moment, you know. Hmm. And it was just that's the vibe I was getting. But the writing, right? I'm gonna say some of the writing is atrocious. Like, so there's you probably know this because uh, it's been memed a lot, but. Uh, so Jet meets this uh, woman called uh, Woodcock, and uh, the line the lines go right. He he says, "Well, sounds to me like blackmail." And she she, this I'm not oh, making this God, up. Yeah, she says, "Damn right it is because you are black and male." And I was like, "Yeah, oh that I that that do you know I I generally found that offensive. Like, and most things don't." You know, I, I I don't get offended by, but generally, I just thought. I, also, that woman. It's unnecessary. So I I didn't pick up on her name, um, but that woman. Every scene she was in was some of the worst scenes in the series. Yeah, it I was, was like it was uncomfortable. I was like, okay, I get the whole like, uh, get it? She's flirting with him, but it went on for too long. Which also yeah. is another point I have written down here, which is the point. The, the the thing that made Cowboy Bebop charming was that it was twenty minutes. Every yes, every episode was there. Something happened. Something happened. It was keeps going. There's a conclusion. Boom. Whereas it's just, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this series is an hour. It, and oh, it dragged. It dragged. You on. can and and unfortunately it leads to the scene. So as I mentioned with the Woodcock, that. If this was in the anime, which, thank Christ, I don't remember the character being in the anime, or if she was, she was probably a one-off kind of thing. But the joke would have been, they'd have got the information, she'd have been like, hey, Jet, you owe me something, and he'd be like, okay, whatever. And then that would be it. That would be the joke. That You know, it'd be the off-kilter humour of, like, get it, an older woman's flirting with him, but he's not into it. And they'd move on with it, but... In the series, she pops up like a second time for another f- few minute scene. Yeah, it's just because... like, yeah, we get it, we get the joke. Continue on, and yeah, I, I generally, I was generally in such a, and then, and then, and then, even you know, not to, to make it even worse, uh, she goes ahead. Well, I say she. It's not like she, that she has done this. She, you know, she. I think. Considering that she acted and had to say these lines, yes. I, you know, I feel like, you know, but I mean, the writing, she goes, she says uh, uh, something along the lines of chocolate milkshake. And I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. yeah you know, it's it, also it, I... so kind of continuing on with the um, terribly written script as well. There's one scene that I think typifies everything that I feel is wrong with the script um, and kind of to a degree the characters of the series, which is, I think it was episode five, maybe. It's after Faye joins the Bebop properly. Right. There's a scene right at the start, I'm pretty sure, where uh, Spike walks into the room and is like, we're out of hot water, guys. And uh, Jet's like, what the hell? And Faye's like, oh, that's my shower bath shower. And they turn to us like, what? And then for about five Aww. minutes, there's a long explanation of... Expository she, dialogue. She likes yeah. to shower, then have a bath, then shower. Now, I, I'm i not saying I'm a script writer here. I'm not saying I knew how to write stuff. But the best way this would have happened, right? The setup was the same. She'd have gone, shower, bath, shower. And they'd have gone, what? And she'd have explained, oh, well, I, I like to have a shower, then a bath, then a shower. And they'd have both looked at each other and gone, and walked off. And then the next scene would have played. But instead, they just stand there as she explains it, and then they're like, but I just don't understand. You'll need to explain this further. And it's... Yes, like, I don't know what I don't know what a shower or bath or... Oh, yeah. And, you know, and they just... So, the, well, it kind of ties in as well. So the one thing... Whilst, as I mentioned, I liked, I liked Spike and I liked Jet. They were both... I thought they were played really well. Mm. I feel like th- this also shows the kind of weakness of Spike's character because Spike in the anime was he was a bit aloof. He, he clearly had a dark past and he wasn't very open. And when he was, he was kind of quite sarcastic and 
kind of kind of playful you know he, he wasn't he wasn't a gloomy character, but he wasn't like a chipper, upbeat character. Whereas, it's different because, yeah, go on. Whereas in this one, like the the shower thing, he was like, oh, "Tell me more! Oh my god, I've got to try that!" And it's like this, this is no longer Spike. This this doesn't feel like something he'd say. This it, it feels like something he'd be like, "That sounds stupid," or whatever. I think like, it's... compared to the anime, he he is, you know, you know, I'm. There's a bit of mystery to him, and you know he doesn't bring up his past for obvious reasons. But it just it, in the TV series it feels more ham-fisted, whereas you know it yeah. because uh, it's it's weird because I, I was thinking right. Well, what what is the runtime for? Because so it's twenty six episodes and about twenty minutes each, hmm. and then there's ten episodes, but it's about forty to an hour, yeah, each roughly, right? And I kind of worked out and the it's about well, it, it's it's you know you would think oh well uh, there's there's more episodes but less minutes each but but in actuality right I think it's more developed with the because you know it, it's more developed each time you 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 know you watch an episode and you grow with the character whereas yeah I think with the TV series it's because it's limited and well. I mean, it doesn't. It, there's going to be more seasons, right? So I feel like, because um, I think they have confirmed a, a season two. Okay. But, uh, but um, I, I don't. Yeah. I, I no, think I they rushed it. I they get, rushed it. Well, I I get you. I I think so. I think it's less about rushing. I think it's more that um, the, the so the one underpinning, the one weakness of this entire series, right? The thing that. I think really takes it down several pegs is that whoever wrote this series doesn't seem to understand subtlety or brevity. Yeah. Because with with, with the anime, um I mean like just like a random example, like the trucker episodes, right? They yeah. help out some space truckers. In our episode, we're introduced to space truckers. In that same episode, he meets a space trucker, they're in trouble, he helps a space trucker, and then they leave. The, the truckers are gone. You don't see those truckers ever again, or if you do, there's maybe, like, a mention. And that's because it's, like, 20 minutes. It's it's show, don't tell, basically. It's like, yeah. look, we we see bits of the space trucker life. We don't need a trucker to sit down and spike and be like, let me walk you through what we do every day. And then there's some, like, light-hearted banter and Spike will randomly throw a few fucks in just to really uh, show how cool they are. Um... But yeah, in the Netflix show, I imagine that would have been a recurring character. The the trucker would have shown up again, much like... I know we saw Anna in the anime occasionally. You know, she was like the contact. But the amount of time uh... spent spent on her, uh, the, 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 the guy at the bar, and like... The, uh, was it Gren? Gren, yeah. And the, Jesus Christ, the amount of time spent... Look... In the anime, right, Julia is dead. That's it's kind of the point of it, you know. It it it's it's a ghost that haunts Spike throughout or ever, right? Now, when I saw Julia was alive in this one, I was like, okay, this is an interesting this is an interesting way they're doing it. Let's go. Maybe she'll die mid season, and that'll be the turning point. It'll be a season finale. But Jesus Christ. Julia in the Cowboy Bebop Netflix series might be one of the most boring characters I have ever come across in well, any show. Yeah, or oh, the yeah, I think and Vicious as well is just really like because Vicious in in again in the anime and I, you know they like I said, like you said before they they mysterious and yeah. you want to know about them and then when you finally do meet them it's you know it is tense you you got butterflies in your in your yeah. stomach kind of vibe whereas vicious here is like an like a whiny angry teenager yeah it's you know it, it's it's well so the the vibes that it gave me with the vicious and julia subplot well <laughs> i say subplot it was just the plot because sometimes half an episode would just be about them but the vibes it gave me was that they were making this 
And then the production team were like, wait, wait, wait. You know, uh, you, you know those HBO shows? You know where you've got like eight different characters and they've got three other characters that they're trying to double cross and it all like plays out and it's it's very like strong political intrigue. Mm. What if Cowboy Bebop had that? Uh, and it, it, it just felt like they were going like, hey, look, Game of Thrones had a lot of fans. What if we just like added some kind of Game of Thrones overthrow the powerful kind of subplot? That would be cool. And it it just, I don't know, it it strikes me as something that was written by someone who watched Cowboy Bebop, but via binging it on Netflix whilst they were scrolling through their phone. It well, kind of... Uh... The thing is, right? I, I, you know, I, I don't, right? I don't like throwing this, the the term woke around, hmm. but I'm going to say this: the, I'm going to say, the original series was more woke than, than this one, and that's and that came out in 1998. And you might think, right? Well, what do you mean, right? Hmm. It's like, well, the thing is, the the amount of diversity and inclusion that that was in the anime was was also ahead of its time, right? So the character Gren uh, in the original had like a two-part series and uh, it was um, it was a, ba- a badass character that worked, that worked alongside Vicious and and then unfortunately that character, you know, was uh, submitted to like these experimental drugs and it had, you know, these side effects that, uh, you know, uh, developed, uh, you know, female hormones and and you know, developed breasts and whatnot, and uh, and that character was going through gender dysphoria, but you know, towards the end, uh, mm. accepted, accepted for for what uh, they were, and and I and um, yeah, and the thing was with this one, no, don't you know, don't get me wrong, I think I think having, um, like diversity and inclusion is 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 good but i felt like with this it was now i i actually looked up a bit and uh, apparently the they are planning to develop that character more however they they i think okay. what they said they felt they needed to add the character in so it was kind of shooed in a bit but the uh. problem is it, it um which is you know fair you know fair enough um uh, but it felt a bit like, like I, uh, you know, you could have done a lot with that character hmm. uh, had they done it, you know, rather than because sh- basically it felt like when I when I saw Gren in this one, it felt like you know something out of Cabaret with with the bar thing. No, no, the thing is in the anime the the Gren um, plays like um, I think a saxophone or trumpet at a bar, so I think. They kind of made uh, the whole bar thing into, yeah. and they incorporated it, and as a major like area. So I can understand why they did that. Um, but I don't know. I it's not it, so much like the yeah. Go on. It it all feels like they're trying. I mean, going back to my point about Game of Thrones, ifying it. It all goes back very much to the feeling that they're trying to be like wait. What if Cowboy Bebop had like six series? It's like no, that's not. That's it. It's the equivalent of kind of adapting Dragon Ball Z, but being like, look, you know, yeah, people like the action, but what if it was about fighting depression? What if like Goku just sat down and like realized that you know depression and the human spirit are really important? It's like. Yeah, you could go the fuck ahead and do that, whatever. Just, it's such a strange idea that they're like, that's what that's what Cowboy Bebop needs to be. And it's like, no, it's if anything, Cowboy Bebop was sort of the antithesis of an overarching plot. I mean, yeah, you had the you had the vicious stuff, obviously, but like, it I don't know. It just feels to me that some of the appeal of Cowboy Bebop was that. The universe felt alive because they went around the universe so much and they had little stories that stood on their own. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whereas the TV show feels like it's allergic to doing that. As if like the idea of like, oh, we're doing a one-off episode is like, oh, God, no. 
no, we could never do that. Everything's got to play into each other. Every character's got to be set up. You know, these people, you'll see them in season three. Like, you know, the environmental people that turn people into trees? Yes. I can guarantee you, without a shadow of a doubt, if they make a season two, they will pop up again. I I can already see it. It's well. I thought the the uh, the um that 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 leader uh, died from the spores, wasn't it? Well, yeah, no, no but I, I I can see the organization or whatever showing. Oh, up, the like, organization, like, right? I, right, I, got you. Oh, I can see sort of like, oh, that was my sister. Now I'm out for revenge, and it's it all felt needlessly convoluted. Basically, it's because, as I say, the the charm of Cowboy Bebop, at least to me, and obviously it's got different appeal to different people. Yeah. But to me, it was a very fun anime because, like, it was something I could watch two episodes of or, like, ten episodes of. And I knew they'd, they'd kind of be standalone adventures. Yeah. And they'd vaguely tie into each other. And, you know, there, there was a plot going on, but... Oh, yeah, it was like a, a overarching kind of yeah. thing in the background. It was, yeah. Like and... I said, it was in the background. But... Yeah, it, it was the focus on, like... It's the focus on the moment. Yes. You know, like, Spike is... He's not helping out those truckers because the trucker's boss uh, has a has a contact to someone in the syndicate who will uh, play a part later on, who'll be able to tell him where Julia's handler is, who'll then be able to inform someone else. It's like, no, he's just helping the truckers because he's helping the truckers. They're... It's the immediate thing, whereas the Netflix series genuinely seemed incapable of not setting this up as like a five-season TV show, which, I don't know, made it really dull. Um <laughs> Yeah, well, I think the also uh, we're gonna have to bring this character up, uh, Ed. Yes. No. Right. Okay. So, Ed. My experience with Ed, right? Because the I I before watching this, I'd seen one or two vi- t- uh, titles of videos recommended to me on YouTube. I didn't watch them intentionally, so we could do this. But the videos were all along yeah. the lines of like, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. Holy shit, what did they do? And I was like, no, mm. not watching it. I'm I'm not letting anyone's like view spoil or like change my the way I look out, you know, because I don't want to be watching yeah. and being like, oh, I got to look out for this now. And I saw a clip, a brief clip of um, Ed. So throughout the entire series, is like Ed's popping up next episode. I reckon Ed's popping up next episode, and I was like, where the fuck is he? And then at the end, it's like, oh. There's Ed at, at, at the very end. And oh. you know what, though? To be honest, honestly, I'm glad you only showed up at the end. I'm, I'm yes. glad. It was 30 seconds was enough, actually. So um, it was, I'm glad. I, I, it was... It, oh, I don't know. It, I think, do you know what it is, right? I think, not that I'm saying it's impossible, hmm. you know, but I think translating li- um, anime into live action, it's... It's, it's very it's difficult. Like the, it's like the uncanny valley effect, well, you know, so and it was especially at that moment, and it was like, oh... It does kind of tie in to one criticism I do have of the series, in that it feels like everyone's overacting a little bit. It It feels like the direction they were given is just like... No, man, no, 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 no. You've got to, like... You've got to be crazy. You've got to go over the top. Dude, this is like a cartoon we're doing. And it's, like, it's... I don't know. It it felt very... Almost slapstick in parts. I think somebody said it was, it was like watching an ad- adult Spy Kids film. Yeah, um, well, yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> it, it felt a little bit... Yeah, it... It felt like they were doing too much to be the characters, if that makes mm. sense. Like, I right. To be fair, like I'm gonna, because I I've uh, I've written down best character and worst character, and okay, I didn't put Ed as the worst character. Now the reason being is we've there was only a minute for that of screen time. Of yeah, I I think Ed. it would be a little bit unfair to say Ed was the worst character just because. I mean, we saw Ayn longer than you did Ed, so yes, I I feel like it is genuinely an unfair, you know, thing. 
yeah however you know we are as as uh as um viewers yes i guess we're allowed to you know basically our impressions of this ed you know aren't exactly no oh absolutely no no but um i don't know i I, they unless unless they can turn that character around i don't know but i mean honestly i'm not even sure if season two will go ahead i'm hope i'm hopeful it won't because like (sighs) it's so i mean to be honest right the worst part is now as well let's say a season two does go ahead right what the fuck are they gonna do because yeah we've we've got the plot of cowboy bebop has played out the start middle and end has happened uh so like season two will only be the like vicious and julia show featuring like oh well i i that's the thing i i kind of hope that they just leave yeah vicious well leave vicious uh, to to rot in his cell so also i i think another big elephant in the room we have to address is the ending now, personally, right, the end, the last, I think, the last four or five, yeah, the last four episodes of Cowboy Bebop, I think, are some of the most, like, bittersweet endings to anything. Because, like, slowly the crew of the Bebop kind of leave. Like, mm. Ed finds her dad. Uh, I can't remember what happens to Ayn. I feel like they find a home for Ayn. Oh, oh no, Ayn, no, Ayn goes with Ed. I'm oh sure. yes no yeah you're right yeah Ayn goes with ed um and sort of like it's kind of obvious that fee kind of wants to head off and you know and then obviously spike heads over to where the syndicate are to the church and i you know if you haven't seen cowboy bebop i don't know why you're still watching but obviously spike dies um but it is it's a kind of bittersweet thing because it's kind of clear that Spike is happy with this. He, he's accepted it. It's kind of... it. It's the end he wants. He's kind of going out on his own terms. You, you know, sort of it's... It's quite an emotional thing. Like, honestly, yeah. what, once Ed leaves the bebop, it is a very slow wind down to, like, this is it, guys. You know, we, it's been good, but nothing lasts forever. And, like... That's why I kind of like Be- Kawa Bebop, because it's like, live in the moment, take advantage of everything that happens, you know, at the time, because you never know what's going to happen, sort of like, you know... And it suits the... The, the ending suits um, yeah. the characters, like, because he did leave... He did have, like, a carefree life, because, uh, you know, that was his, you know, his attitude, and... Um... Yeah, he, he was... Basically, he was done running, sort of like yes. you know. He 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 decided. Look, it's time to face up to my past, you know. And uh, uh, it's it, obviously it's very subtle and it's never obvious. So it, it's my just my yeah. interpretation. But yeah, it, he went there to die. Basically, like the the point was, he kind of knew he was inevitable. I mean, there was hundreds of syndicate people and won him. You know, that's the thing. It, it ends on a, a cliffhanger, but but you know. The, and yeah. that's the thing the 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 viewer it's led to their own conclusion yeah oh, did and he I mean, make it did he that, not and like that and that's great i the, love that big it's the, better that way yeah and the end is it bluebird i think it's called the song that plays with the choir yes. as he crashes through the window was like you know i mean it, it's it's historic it's sort of like it, it's, it's, like, it's iconic it's like, like yeah. i say there's a series is iconic and it's they beautiful. Butchered it. Oh god. So the, it, the everything about it they butchered it. Yeah. It, it was like oh they massacred my boy. Yeah, well you know, yeah, yeah. They exactly. Did. It's I mean like the so I mean whenever I watch a TV series, right? I like, you know, I, I like to see what happens. I, I don't usually invest stakes in things. I'm never like, that character has to make it, or that character has to die, you know, sort yeah, of like. Yeah. I like to see it play out. But throughout the entirety of episode nine, I was just like, oh, wait, no. wait, wait. oh, oh uh, sorry, ten, sorry. Ten, I was yeah. like, oh, no, Julia's in trouble. And then Aria's like, I don't care. Like, she could be shot in the head right now and yes. I would not give a shit. They could yeah. forget about Julia, never mention her again. And you know what? 
That's fine. I, I don't care. And to be honest, the same with Vicious. He could have been killed by fucking tripping on a step. And yep. it'd be like, well, okay, he's out of it. Fair enough. Well, they ruined the... Because like, they, cause in the anime, hmm. uh, it, it's just a badass moment. Spike uses a grenade and it's just... You know, it is just, and you're you're just watching that, watching it all, and you you you're taking everything in, and it's just a literally, it's a blast, you know. Yeah. And then, and then it's just they ruin it. Uh, I mean, they still have the iconic, you know, he's got his katana, and uh, he's you know he, he he's got his pistol. Yeah. And then, but vicious is shot. By Julia. And yeah, it's just it's, like... uh, up until that point, I was like, they're going for it. Okay, right. The, there's going to be closure. That's great. Okay, the, the, you know, the, they're at least, they've got to this point. Fair enough. Look, you know, he's going to he's gonna fall through that window. It'll be, you know, and I was like, oh, and maybe, maybe they'll do like an artful thing, kind of with the anime. He's falling and maybe like he looks kind of at peace. Black. And then credits roll. And be like, yes, let's go. But no, the oh god, the I like so basically right. I, I I try to rank a series on the entirety of the journey. Right, the, the beginning and end are important, but what's in the middle is just as important. Genuinely, I feel like the ending to the Netflix Cowboy Bebop was so egregiously shit that it knocked it down a mark or two, like purely for that ending because it was the worst piece of sequel baiting I have ever seen yes it's, it's, basically uh... it, it genuinely felt like they were about to complete Cowboy Bebop right for all all the sins they committed throughout the entire series I'd have been like they did it though they closed it out well you know they 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 did what I was expecting to see at the end. Kudos to them. But it's like a fucking Netflix executive walked in. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Shoot Fearless. That's shoot Vicious. <laughs> and have Spike fall. But also he's actually fine. And then have it set up for season two. And I have never been like... I wouldn't say angry... And I wouldn't say disappointed. Kind of like mid midway between. Like, just like, man, I don't fucking care anymore. Kind of yeah. like, I basically, I was like, right, they're going to be making a season two then. And then I was like, you know what, though? If they do make a season two, I'm just not going to watch it. There's <laughs> like, the, the, like, to be fair, right, this... And two episodes in, I was a little bit struggling with the feeling of like, should I just message Dan? Should I tell him it's off? I I've sat through two hours of this now, and like, I've yet to enjoy it. I was like, I it's early okay. enough, but I was like, no, no, I'm fucking sticking with this. I'm gonna make a I, video. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed um, the one episode. I I I think the best episode was the. Um... I can't remember which one, but it's called Galileo Hustle, and that is the one where um, Faye meets um, kind. Of, well, she thought she was her mother, but it turns out she was just using her for uh, to get at her money. And oh yeah. Now I thought well, I say best episode. There are no great <laughs> episodes in this. I get you, but I'd say out of all of them. That one was, I it was all enclosed, which I quite liked. Yeah. Um. The you know, the characters were feeding off each other, and I'd say the the bit with um, when Jet is like, man, I gotta go to I gotta see my daughter's recital, and while that was not in the anime at all, and then he attends the recital, and and then he's just enjoying watching. Hmm. his daughter play and then what in meanwhile in the back you see uh spike uh you know being uh, <laughs> attacked by all these thugs i you know i thought i i, I thought that was funny i i you know it was, yeah well, I, to be honest there were moments right I, I, sorry i i know i just went on like a five minute to read against this series there were moments i did kind of enjoy like mm. um for me 
personally, I can't remember. I want to say it's episode six, maybe the one where Spike sits in the machine. And, oh, that one! And yeah. he goes through a bit of Inception stuff. I I kind of like that episode. I think like it was quirky. It was quirky for sure. Yeah, and and, um, and it kind of did something a bit different as well. It's sort of like it, it it kind of stood on its own. It's like oh oh that's that's kind of a cool concept and stuff. You know, it's like mm. yeah, whatever that that was fine. And like honestly, I will say some of the fights. I felt like were fairly well choreographed. Like, yeah, I think they were done quite well. Um, which wasn't what I was expecting. I was genuinely expecting like really bad fight scenes. So I, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised with that. Um, and the CG wasn't bad. The sets were okay. I think they, you know, they, the, the what they got right, I thought was, um. But they they did have some the the feel of you know the ship and some of the you yeah. know the setting. I felt like the one thing they really I think perf- they got it perfect, absolutely perfect was the big shot show. It was oh, like watching yeah. a okay yeah yeah yeah. It was down to a T. Uh, yeah, and and while that was only a small thing, I was I was like they, it, it, I it was it was like watching you know. M- m- like almost like looking in a reflection, almost uh, it was uncanny and yeah, in a but in a good way. I was like, yeah, I, I you know I, I like this screen, and that I enjoyed. Um, but so here's the con. Well, it's not controversial because it's it's irredeemable shit. So I I think any uh any <laughs> any idea or like concept would work. Honestly, right? Hear me out. I think. If they'd have made this a one and a half or two hour movie, I think it might have worked. Or worked better. Because I feel like the thing that left the TV series down is that it went on too long and kind of meandered a lot. Yeah. It kind of it, it was too much up its own arse and wanted to kind of create some kind of cinematic setup so they can have like season eight and the the spin-off Gren show and stuff like that. Well, I feel I like just, if, yeah, go on. if they just focused literally on, you know, sort of like incorporating two or three plots, right? Like two or three plots of the anime into one, you know, into a movie. So like, you know, they all join and have Lafoe kind of like as a bad guy and then maybe he'd meet up with Vicious at the end who you saw mm. glimpses of. I think it'd have worked. I think it'd have been fine. It'd have been something we forget about, but it'd have been like, oh, yeah, that was all I right. I think the sad thing is we got to accept that this is happening. It's happened, and yeah. there will be a season two, because I think they, well, they have confirmed it. But the thing is, my take on it is, right, okay, so if if they are, if they, if they are going to go ahead with it, what would you, like, say now... You stumble into the Netflix uh, room. Mm. They're all looking at you, and uh, so, and they're there, and they say, "Right, rid, imminent tortoise." So to be fair, <laughs> right. So I I did briefly think about this because not not in the context of I'd be in charge, but it's like, okay, what what could they possibly do in season two that would even interest me? That would even get me to watch the trailer for it, right? So I I was thinking about this, and I, I'm assuming you've you've got uh, ideas of your own as well. Um, so, what one thing I did kind of I I I'm I'm hesitant to use the word like, but I didn't mind the idea of is the idea the concept of Spike and Jet being kind of enemies, because I was like, yeah, you know what that that could maybe hold some weight, um, you know, like a shorter series and stuff. If they did five episodes and each episode was half an hour, I think that would work as a kind of like, oh, Jet hits Spike, but maybe they need to do something. Um, well, how they end, I mean, how they ended it, 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 it basically hinted the there'll be a whole episode where hmm. a majority of it will be spent 
trying to get the gang back together. Yeah, I mean, I I can guarantee you now when season two comes out, uh, the first episode yeah. is going to be like, I'm going to kill you, Spike, for what you did. Fast forward 40 minutes. You know what? I'm really sorry for what I said. Yeah, don't worry, Jet. Okay, let's go after this person. And yeah. it's going to be a meaningless cliffhanger that never pays off. Or if it does pay off, it's going to be just a, you know, decompressing balloon. Like, do you, hmm. do, what what would you like to see in a season two? Uh, less of Julia. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the good thing now, right? The, to be fair, the positive of it, if season two does come out, it means killing Julia is going to be a main focal point. I, that's the thing. I, I, it, it's because, like I said, in the anime, Julia is a, like a mysterious kind of character and you know uh and you know there are twists in the anime that are similar but it was not it uh, you know it was uh, when when she died it was like oh hmm. you know and you felt you felt sad you felt sad for spike yeah it, it clearly had a big effect on him it had a, be- and a big effect but this one is just right if anything right try and make Julia less like I find less is more yeah well it, yeah it's it's the it's the going back to my biggest criticism of this is show don't tell is that like if we saw a quarter of the vicious and Julia scenes I think it might have worked yeah because we'd have seen them progressing even right but we'd get glimpses of it we'd get like Oh, they're they're happy together, and then three episodes later, it's like, oh, oh, they're not happy together. What's happened there? And then like two episodes later, it's like, oh, oh, something's going on. She doesn't trust him anymore. Okay, but instead, they gave us too much, far too much. Like when I right when I think of a like a like a, a great villain, I think hmm. okay, so you know, um, like Gus Fring in Breaking hmm. Bad, right? I still think he is he is one of the most terrifying villains like in a like TV series and show especially you know uh but he you know when he, like when he had like that 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 character had a presence and any time that that character had a presence in the room you felt it right and you felt you kind of felt like that uh, with vicious in the original series and now this yeah. uh, technically now if if you you know as if we'll all be honest, vicious right in the anime and even Julia they don't they're not that much of a big role really. No, I they... mean v- vicious. Um, so I, I watched the I, well I rewatched the anime with a friend um, in university, mm. and one criticism he had of Cowboy Bebop was at the end he mentioned the whole you know big fight with vicious and stuff, and he was like, I don't. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't really know who Vicious was, so I didn't really feel anything about him killing him or not. That kind of, you know, mm. it's like, yeah, I, you know, I wasn't invested in him as a villain, but that wasn't the point. And, like, I, I think that is true, that it kind of... Vicious in the anime wasn't, wasn't the big bad. He wasn't the freezer, you know. He wasn't sort of... The, the big villain that, you know, is very terrifying and everyone, you know, wants to kill. He was just there and he had beef with Spike, but we only saw brief bits of him. And I think... Yeah, that... it was it was kind of like a... Like a... Almost like a spooky character, almost. Like yeah, in a, exactly. Like a... I mean... A, and... The, the vibe that the Netflix show gave me, and I know this is very cynical of me, but... Well, we're, if, we're at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like they're deliberately trying to sort of, like, go against the green to sort of, like, subvert the whole thing. It Basically, to me, it feels a lot like The Last Jedi, basically. It's like, look, you've got this, this fairly straightforward story. Everyone knows how it goes. Now, someone comes along it's like, wait, what if the good guy was the bad guy? Or if the bad guy yeah, was well, like the, the focus, I, and it's like no, I don't care, and it's, because I can see it. Next season will be Spike wants to kill Julia. 
And it's like, dude, isn't that, like, crazy, though? Because, like, in the cartoon or wherever you guys watched, like, Julia died and sad, Spike was sad, but now Spike is would be happy if she's dead. That's, like, so crazy. And it's like, okay, cool. So it it's literally the antithesis of Cowboy Bebop, then. I think the problem is, is that, well, with all these live-action you know, takes on hmm. animes that Netflix are providing, right? It's basically you 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 you've insulted the entire cowboy bebop fan base. And that's yeah. the thing. And the fan base are the ones who are trying to, you know, they you know want to support. And the thing is you've you've they've kicked them down essentially, basically. I mean, I, and... I think to be honest, to be to be completely honest, I don't think this is meant for the Cowboy Bebop fans. Oh no, it's not. I, it's not. That's the, the thing. It's, this this it's is evidently for, clear. So the this T V series, if I was to pitch it uh to anyone, this is a TV series for fans of Cowboy Bebop. And by that I mean the type of people that will see a Cowboy Bebop t-shirt in a shop and be like, dude, I'll wear that. And then is like, dude, I'm the biggest Cowboy Bebop fan without say, seeing the series. It's it's the most, like, shallow film of, like, uh, look, we need to call it Cowboy Bebop. And we liked some of the ideas, like the style and aesthetic, but the rest is uh, is just not what we're looking for. We just want to make it's... a generic HBO ripoff for Netflix. Yeah. So we want to call it Cowboy Bebop. It's, uh... Also, I just realised we've not talked about her at all. Um, I really didn't like Faye. I thought she was just really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> like, uh, when she when she f- was first there, I didn't mind her. I thought, okay, yeah, in the anime she's mildly annoying, like... And you know she's kind of full of herself. She, you know, she's not trustworthy. It was like, man, they have really messed up. And I, like, near the end, Faye was also a character. Was like, if Faye dies right now, I genuinely don't care. Like, there's, it can only improve the series if Faye is no longer here, because well, the the script was just atrocious for her. I, I think that's just I the, the writing. It was just the writing. Like I said, the writing yeah. was bad. And I mean, that line, uh, uh, the la- you know, the last episode, welcome to the ouch, motherfuckers. Yeah. It was just, oh. So, because that, admittedly, right, the only person it mildly suited all of the swearing was kind of Faye, because I think... It, obviously, because it's implied she was cryogenically frozen around our era. Mm. So, like, I, I mildly saw it as like, okay, right. You know, like, someone from now would just, like, casually swear and stuff, especially if they brought up on, you know, like, TV shows or whatever like that. So it's like, okay, I, I can vaguely kind of see that. But they they went far too overboard to the point where, like, Faye is one of the worst characters, I think. So, so we're, we're going to slowly wrap up here, I think. So you mentioned you had a list of favourite and least favourite character. Okay, so, I mean, there's no surprise. Um, worst ca- character, I just went uh, Vicious slash Julia. Yeah, um, I, I'm with you there, because I was about to say, for my worst, I would say Julia, but Vicious and Julia are so, like, inseparable and both insufferable. Just... They're just like, yeah, they're they're both there. They're the worst. Yeah. Oh. Um. But um. And best characters, I would say, you know, Jet Black. I. Yeah. I think Spike wasn't Spike wasn't too bad. I thought I thought it was it was good. And yeah. Ein. Yeah. Well. So <laughs> I. So Ein basically right. Ironically, I thought this is gonna be this is gonna be like a uh, a quick th- uh, road to success for Netflix here. What do they need? A cute dog and it to do like cute things on screen. I was like, there we go, right. Just have Ayn in every episode doing something quirky or cute for like five minutes. Yeah. You'll have redeemed yourself. You'll have made some of it watchable. I will watch this series for Ayn. That's the problem. A few episodes, I was just like, where's Ayn? Yeah, well, like four or five episodes in, he just disappears forever. So... And and also, oh my god, the... I, so I tried explaining to a friend of the podcast, Tim, Ayn's role, 
that's like so you know Ayn in the anime is like yeah I love Ayn he's he's a good boy and it's like yeah he is so it's like so the Netflix series has Ayn um, embedded with projectors in his eyes where he can project the clown guy Lafo, and Tim was like what no and I was like yeah no that happens yeah. Ayn Ayn is like a weird robot kind of dog thing. And it, again, though, it kind of it, it typifies Netflix, the Netflix show's like weakness. In the anime, Ayn was a data dog, but it was never explained really what he did or who he was. Like, he was important, but he was kind of left at that. He was subtle. It, it was, you know, like, I don't know, God knows, the, this whole universe is weird. The also, ne- right, yeah. Netflix series had to be like, no, we're going to give like a really deep fucking link to LeFou. We need this dog to somehow tie into another character. It's like, no, you fucking don't. He is a dog, Netflix. Jesus Christ, yeah. not everything has to lead in to, like, a convoluted five-season fucking arc. Anyway, sorry, well, what, what the, were you going to say? Well, I was going to say as well, there was, there was some differences, like... So, again, in the an- anime, they're very much, like... Like, not to go heavy on, like politics i don't usually like to but it's it's evidently clear in the anime that they're very much against capitalism and you know um yeah well the, the system's the kind of and broken system. and stuff yeah. and 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 they hint at that throughout but what there the thing is the the police in like basic well my only problem with the uh, jet blacks uh you know family mm. kind of thing cuz basically um his um like his wife, his ex-wife, is with one of the cops, and and uh, what's that episode where you know he he goes to see his old buddy cop, and it turns out he was the one that betrayed him. Yeah, it's oh and, god, they they really they really uh, fucking butchered that as well. Jet Jet's background was really cool because he was it was just hard noir and like filled with uh, you know yeah. hopelessness. It, it was. Be, be, I mean, well, basically, I think it's it's less even linked to any, like, economic kind of thing. I think it is just the fact that, like, in the far future, in space, like, just life is really bad. Sort of like, you know, things break down, everything breaks down. And well, when that breaks down, everyone, people break down, society does. Like, everyone's... Well, you know, not trustworthy. Well, it seems like they are. We, you know, the Netflix studio, they like, no, we want a world that is hopeful and nostalgic. And it's just Yes. Like, yeah, that it's... It and that's the problem. They're, they've got... That's the thing. That, that, that's, the problem is that the person who made the anime had different ideas. And, yeah. you know, what they were trying to convey out of it via subtleties. No, they're not in your face about it. Yeah, but it's, it's there. The, the it's point, there in the background. The point, I mean, hell, you know, with the Samurai Champloon uh, series, that you know, they, they pretty much were uh, characters that took on, um, you know, like the, the the, you know, like the was it the police or something like that. It was uh, kind anyways, of yeah, kind of. It's yeah. I mean, the the thing is, I think ultimately, it's that the the point of. You know, Cowboy Bebop is... It, it's a little bit... I wouldn't say cyberpunk, but you know what I mean. It's kind of... It's very... It's, it's dystopian. Yeah, it, it's kind it's, of... It's gritty, and it's just... Well, it, it's it's drifters. It's a bunch of drifters going through a broken universe. Yes, but that's the thing. I think the beauty of the anime series, not to sound like pretentious, but hmm. the, the it's, it's, a, it's a classic because... The uh, for me because of the attention to detail and yeah. you're watching it all and you know it glides by and mm. you're just like and and then you know because I was watching it um, uh, with a friend um, a while back and I was saying look just just to remind you all of that is hand drawn yeah you know there's yeah. not much CGI in it it is all hand drawn and you and and then when you've got that in mind, thinking yes, people actually made this, mm. and you know, it's little things like like smoke coming off the barrel, or a character you know flicking through buttons, and uh, I mean hell, even the title, the title thing alone, and you see 
the ha- hands oh God. move in, the, and it's just so the uh, the Netflix version of the opening as well is just it's bad, and it's it's almost hard to put put your finger on it. But like, there's like there's the silhouette shot of Spike running, which looks like a parody. Oh, it yeah, looks well, like someone's taking the piss, and like, there's just, there's no. So obviously, the, there's, you you get it a lot. People sort of show a picture of an original game and a remake of it, and it'll be Soul versus Soulless, or uh, was, was it Grand Theft Auto versus the Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> you know sort of you've got the Soul versus Soulless meme, and I think this really does fit it. I think. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop, the anime, was filled with soul. It it was a, like a just a beautiful journey. Also, some sloppy editing as well. Like there were like camera angles that was like, like yeah. I was like, what the hell is going on here? But the, I think uh, uh, this is this is getting really nitpicky right now. But I, you know, I feel like I'm I'm fair. You know, I'm I'm well within my rights to say this. But there's the second episode, and you know the one where. They're chasing around um uh like a terrorist with like a teddy bear. Oh yes, yeah. Well, at the start, uh they're in the church and then, you know, um Spike is in the fight and there's there's some good choreography there, uh, mm. uh, you know. But then um uh Jet uh is chasing after this guy, he gets knocked out, right? And then the title uh like the, the opening of music to like tank Yes starts to kick in, right? For like, but then, and then after that, the the title credits yes. start up again. No, and yeah, I'm like, I oh. I remember that. So, because yeah, the there was one episode that did it really well, but yeah, that a few of them just didn't go very well because like you'd think what they do is sort of feed in audio, like right, okay, we want the the title is coming up in like ten seconds. Feed in audio at five, so it's like you, and then it would start. There, there was one. I want to say it was maybe episode nine or something. It's there was some kind of thing. There was like the music, and you had some strings that were like going quite high, and then it was like, and then it went into the title, and I was like, ah, oh, that was kind of cool. Um, and that was maybe the highlight of the series for me. <laughs> So I think at this point we've we've talked on for an hour. Uh I think a closing statement basically is appropriate. So I'll I'll go first, have a think, Dan. But if you had to summarize um the Netflix Cowboy Bebop or how you view it, you know, just just a closing statement on the entire thing. I think Actually there is one good thing about this tv series right Mm -hmm. right and the good thing is that you always know that the original anime is there and it reminds you basically it's there to remind you oh my god and then but don't worry don't worry the the classic is still there and it you know yes yeah i i I... I will say whilst this is terrible I, I, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, oh, it's ruined Cowboy Bebop. Because it's like, no. No, it's... Cowboy Bebop is in its entirety. Like, yeah, there's... Th- this has not affected Cowboy Bebop whatsoever. The, this this will be forgotten in two years' time. That's, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I think... Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, but basically, uh, I think Neil... Someone asked Neil Gaiman, right? Hmm. Um... Uh, you know, like, oh, you know, they were kind of worried. Oh, you know, we, you know, we have like bestsellers such as, um, um, uh, oh, what's, what's that? Uh, um, oh, I can't remember, like Twilight or, um, what's that? Oh, I can't, oh, do you know what? I've, I've lost the name of the book. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, but, but basically, all these sort of like Mills and Boons kind of yeah. books and, um, and that are like really popular but really bad. And he made the point: look, the thing is, you're gonna have crap. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ruining what he's saying. He put it more eloquently, but I think that my point is, is that every year you're gonna have 
really bad things you know up you know when people are like oh you know the 80s was such a great decade mm. or the 70s or now everything's bad it's like no no th- there were bad things yeah. then you know like uh sugar da, 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 yeah da. that was in the charts and that was and i i i, I think my dad was saying you know how much he you know hated that song um yeah but the, but the point is is that you know the the classics will always you will remember the classics and they will stand the test of time yeah right so cowboy bebop the anime will will stand the test of time and that's the thing it does you i watched um a few episodes uh, the other day and you know it still stands it's hmm. it's still fresh it's still um you exactly. know it's still got some life into it uh whereas this one will will i you know i'm gonna say this will age like milk but, yeah, I I but... think in in five years time, even if they make a second series, they're not going to make a third because the the critical reception for this has been so poor. But in five years time, someone's going to like the the Netflix Cowboy Bebop series is going to be a punchline to a joke that everyone laughs at. It's it's just going to be that thing. It's like oh god, yeah. Um. Anyway, right. Closing statements. My closing statement is that this uh, this Netflix series is the TV equivalent of Peter Jackson's The Hobbit trilogy of movies. Yeah, it yeah, was, I can see that. I it was see that. far too long. It took very strange liberties. And overall, the best parts of it were the parts that essentially just mirrored the original um and i think whereas cowboy bebop the anime was all about kind of enjoying the moment about subtlety about don't worry about things too much you know like life life is short to enjoy it and sort of the world is full of weird and strange things you know and everyone's gonna have a weird strange journey through it but you know make your own peace with it Whereas the Netflix series just seemed to kind of be written by some people who vaguely were aware of anime is cool right now and were like, hey, we got to make some quick money. So it's... The words of Bruce Lee be like water. Yeah, exactly. It's the, 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 point, the point of the original anime is, you know, show, don't tell. It's brevity. It's yeah. subtlety. Whereas the Netflix show is overly long scenes of too much exposition about characters that nobody cares about, set in a world that just isn't particularly interesting, where everyone's motivations seem to be like multi-tiered and complex and always leading to something. It's uh, it's just not enjoyable. There's I I don't yeah. think. I don't think this is a good TV series on its own, let alone as a comparison to the anime. I think you could never have heard Cowboy Bebop and you probably wouldn't enjoy this very much. Mm. But I don't know. I could be wrong. That's just my view on it. You know, I'm sure there is one person out there, at least one person, who adores the Cowboy Bebop Netflix series. And that, to be honest, though, is also kind of cool because I mean that kind of fits in with the philosophy of the anime. The world is wild and strange. People have you know like different things, so just make sure that you spend your time doing what yeah. you like and don't watch yeah. the series. But yeah, you know this is all just our opinions, right? If you yeah, but like for whatever reason, if you really enjoy this show, um, you know, kudos to you, but. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, it's it's an absolute win. If you enjoy this, then you've watched it. Sweet, you've discovered a new TV series. Hell yeah! But yeah, for me, if I I'm gonna close out by giving it a score out of ten. Uh, I'm going to give it, and I'm gonna be generous here. I'm gonna give it a two out of ten. <laughs> Dan? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I, do you know, I'm going to say... Do you know, I may do decibels one and a half. Yeah, okay. That. There we are. 
that is the official Talk Toys stance on it. Out of his possible 20, Cowboy Bebop scores three and a half. So, that about wraps it up. Honestly, this has been quite a fun episode, actually, because I think this might be the first time we've ever done a Talk Toys kind of thing where it's just been shitting on something for an hour. It's it's quite therapeutic, actually. You're it is venting. It's just venting, and also I'm kind of glad to be honest because as I was watching this, right, I was I was taking notes after every episode or two, just on like thoughts that came to me, and it was like, man, they're really trending into the negative here. Like everything I'm writing down is bad. And it was like, I, I wonder <laughs> it does does Dan dislike this as well? Because it was like. Maybe I'm just being overly harsh, and I don't know, it it, it genuinely, because I remember years ago, right, because I used to think, uh, especially with games and stuff, when you'd give something ranking out of 10, I'd always think, right, it was a good game, but it loses points for these three things, so it's a 7 out of 10. But then I heard someone online say, no, 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 never rank anything as a perfect and knock things off. Everything is a zero until it gains points. Because, like, that's that's the point of everything. Like, not everything is perfect and then is less perfect via certain things. So I was like, yeah, no, that's right. So I view things as neutral. And I was well, like, yeah. I'm going to look, look. Gonna look for good points in the Netflix show. And I just couldn't find any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the thing. I mean, I, I liked... I say Jet Black, I really liked, hmm. um, but it was just a slog. It was a massive slog. I, yeah. I, uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I, I think if we continue on, we're just going to go back into a feedback oh. loop. I think, honestly, you know the the best thing about this, every every day for a week and a half, every day when I got home and ate dinner, I'd put on an episode of Cowboy Bebop. Today, I got home and put on dinner and was like, oh, God, okay. Time to put on Cowboy Bebop. And I was like, wait. No, it's over. Cowboy Bebop's over. Oh, my We're God. Free. We're free. And so that, I'm going to leave her on a positive. I'm free. I don't have to watch any more Netflix Cowboy Bebop. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, this has been fun. We're going to do more Talk Toys and other podcasts in the future. If you are interested, I'll leave like a playlist to our previous ones and stuff. There'll be an upcoming one in a couple of weeks because 2021 is soon ending. So yes, we're going to be is. talking about that with me, Dan, and our other two guests, Tom and Tim. So stick around for that. I'll be putting up other videos. I'm also doing my Advent Calendar trading card edition. So that's going up every day. So stay tuned for that. Um, and that's about it, really. Dan, do you want to plug anything? Uh... No, I, I can't. I can't think of anything. Tell you what, than... I will plug something, guys. Go on. Um, if you've got Netflix subscriptions, uh, go on the search bar. Type in Cowboy Bebop. Uh, so there'll be two of them. One of them will have like a Netflix logo on. Go into that, and you know you can rate things. Rate it as a thumbs down, and Netflix will never recommend it to you ever again. Close out of that. Go on to the next one. It's like God, like this anime guy with big puffy hair. Watch that. Treat yourselves. It's fucking brilliant. Thank you very so much then... for watching. And until See you next soon, time. Space Cowboys. Goodbye. <laughs>